Thank you very much, Diksha. A warm welcome to everybody on behalf of Chamber for Advancement of Small and Medium Businesses. Also, a warm welcome to our uh, guest speaker today, and a very good friend, Akal Pitji, Akal Pit Prabhu. Before I introduce and call upon our speaker today, I would also like to speak a little, uh, give a little background about the chamber, why it was formed, what are the activities we are currently into. So uh, our chamber is based out of Mumbai with our office in BKC. We were founded uh, late 2020 in December 2020, and uh, more details can obviously be found on our website at casmb.org.in. <clears throat> we are very much active on all social media sites including facebook instagram twitter linkedin and uh, most of our webinars as well as uh, youtube live events are available on our youtube channel at csmb india where i believe uh, close to 25 webinars and different knowledge uh, sharing series lectures are available there uh, the chamber was formed with a mission to work very closely with all the stakeholders <clears throat> with regards to advancement of uh, small and medium businesses we carry a vision where we want to make msmes even more resilient and make them a stronger backbone of indian economy as we all know msme contributes almost 30% to india's gdp and uh, more than 48% of manufacturing exports is done by the msme segment the medium small medium enterprises at the same time msme also employs 11 crore people in india and that's why it's considered as the backbone of indian economy on december 20th 2020 honorable minister of msme shri nitin ji gadkari has put a target and also shown us a vision that we should increase the contribution to uh, uh, to the gdp from 30% to 40% and to the exports from 48% to 60% the msme segment is also expected to add almost 5 crore jobs in next 5 years with this vision with these words of wisdom from uh, honorable minister we decided few people minded few like minded people came together and decided to form this chamber with a single target in mind to empower the msme entrepreneurs to achieve the next level uh the objectives as listed out here we want to represent the msmes in various forums in uh, government as well as bureaucratic forums we also want to empower farmers to become entrepreneurs we are trying to bring about a convergence of various research that has been done in academic institutes as well as research institutes different government schemes policies that are out there that can benefit the sme so we want to be a single point of contact where the different stakeholders come together and help the msme entrepreneur to reach the next level we are also trying to assist smes to develop new products so that they can cater to global markets through webinars such as these we are trying to build capacity uh, in in different msmes in their manpower we will uh, we are conducting study tours as well as uh, coming up with strategic tie ups and helping msmes participate in exhibitions in less than couple of months that we are old like our official launch was on 1st march 2021 we have been very fortunate to have a very strong advisory board team as well as a strong management team which comes with varied experience in uh, food finance sales marketing uh, and entrepreneurship we are also already based out of uh, three states including gujarat goa and obviously maharashtra in fact just before uh, we went live today i was in talks with uh, uh, an incubation center in indore so mp will also shortly be covered uh, as part of our chamber activities in last couple of months we have tried to run a webinar series where every mondays we bring entrepreneurs and we are very fortunate to have a successful entrepreneur from the wine industry talk on this uh, chambers platform today on tuesdays we have bringing different experts from uh, technology background last uh, monday uh, last tuesday we had an uh, excellent talk by dr sanjay bhoer who spoke about the novel uh, turmeric processing where the traditional process takes almost 7 days but using his techniques uh, that whole process can be brought down uh, in one single day in uh, previous editions we had speakers from niftem 
BARC Institute of Chemical Technology. So various research and academic institute, their representatives have uh, spoken about different technologies that are available uh, and can be picked up by startups and uh, used as their business model. On Wednesdays, we run a weekly knowledge forum and we have had really good speakers in past and uh, throughout the month of May, we'll be having many more uh, speakers talking on uh, different aspects of business. On Thursdays, we uh, bring about a finance facilitation series. And last uh, Thursday, we had a talk on the Spurti screen. And uh, prior to that, we had uh, speakers talk about on the Ministry of Food Processing Schemes. Uh, shortly, we are trying to bring experts to talk about the performance link incentive in uh, food processing. All our webinars are uploaded on YouTube, have been watched live by more than 2,000 people. And we have more than 2,000 views across all uh, webinars. With, uh, uh, as I checked just uh, some time back, we have uh, almost 660 YouTube subscribers thanks to our two YouTube live programs we did over the weekend. Uh, we have been running many in initiatives as part of the chamber where Startup Buddy program, where we realize a lot of startup entrepreneurs are one man show and they need a help from various, especially service providers like the chartered accountants, company secretary, ISO consultants, so we have started this startup buddy program, which is uh, uh, ideally either free or at a very subsidized rate for our uh, members. We are also conducting monthly meets where members meet each other and many times references and businesses, business transactions are happening within our members. We have also launched the Chamber Investor Network and have already received more than 20 pitch decks. And some of them have been forwarded onwards to, uh, to investors who are looking to invest in especially in the food and agri space. Uh, we are planning to have a buyer seller meet shortly in the month of uh, May and uh, we'll be, uh, we are being supported by a couple of government agencies uh, to organize this buyer seller meet. We've also launched another uh, uh, interesting program called industry defined problem where industries have started pouring in their problems and through a student uh, competition, these problems, solutions to these problems will be seeked. We are also having a separate women's cell uh, where we believe that women entrepreneurship should be encouraged and we need more women uh, in, in the workspace and in the entrepreneurship uh, world as a whole. Uh, a lot of our events are uh, free or at a subsidized rate and uh, our partner events are also free or at subsidized rate to our chamber members. Uh, I'm very fortunate and would like to put it on record <clears throat> that even today's program has been supported by uh, four partners, including AFST, Mumbai Chapter, All India Food Processors Association, NetProfan, and Entra uh, Last but not the least, we have a chamber office in BKC, and any of our chamber member <coughs> can have uh, free access to the office for their team meetings or for their client meetings. Uh, some of the achievements in uh, last two months where we are created an ecosystem where more than 250 food startups are part of our either our mentorship or the startup buddy program. Like I said, uh, it says 15, but um, we have received more than 20 pitch decks and some of them are in advanced stages of getting funded. Uh, buyer, seller, meet, and also technology transfer. In fact, we had a, a one expert talk about dehydration techniques at room temperature. Uh, already some of uh, our attendees are in talks with him for the technology. So this is just the beginning and we believe a lot of work needs to be done and we definitely will be doing in months to come. Uh, the membership is kept at a minimal because our aim is not to collect fees through membership but to actually make a difference to the society and based on the categorization of uh, micro small medium enterprises we have kept the membership so anybody has a turnover up to five crore they can become our member with a membership fee as low as 2500 so this is my number and uh, email address anybody has any questions with regards to anything about the chamber uh, feel free to contact me or Diksha or any of our team uh, at the chamber. So with this, I uh, take this opportunity to welcome and introduce a very good friend of mine and uh, a pioneer in uh, grape-based fruit wines in India, Mr. Kalpit Prabhune, who's currently the managing director and chief winemaker. He's the co-founder and working as a managing director of Rhythm Winery a subsidiary of Hillcrest Foods and Beverages Private Limited, playing an instrumental role in production, research and development, and exploring new markets. Akalpit hails from Pune, 
He's an engineer by education and has over 19 years of experience in the fields of software, construction, as well as foods and beverages. He has over 10 years of relevant experience in winemaking. His journey in wine started a decade ago when he visited the winery in Napa Valley in USA on a business trip and got passionate about winemaking and tasting. To venture into wine business, he completed a course from Wine Spectator School of USA and developed mastery over grape-based fruits, grape-based fruit wines such as pineapple, kiwi, strawberry, peach, and plum, among others. With this, I would like to extend a warm welcome to uh, Mr. Akalpeet. The floor is all yours. We want to hear about your journey and your plans uh, and uh, the future of fruit wines in general. Thank you very much. Akalpiji, you are on mute. Eh? And... Uh, yeah. Uh, hello, friends. Uh, I am really uh, thankful to all of you, and it's a privilege to be a part of this kind of activity. And uh, this is something like a great work that Nilesh and the Shemar is doing that uh, the basic the major the major thing about this kind of an activity is something like an interaction with the people and uh, i'm really happy to be a part of this kind of session so today uh, what i'm going to do is that i'm going to talk about my journey of rhythm winery at the same time what we'll do is that we'll we'll try to put some sort of a points and that will helpful not only for the winery as a project or a venture but uh, it should be helpful helpful for all your projects or ventures which may or may not be of actual if you want to do get into the winery so, okay so just to tell you about uh, myself i'm uh, kalpit prabhune as nilesh has already given my introduction so i have started this uh, winery uh, rhythm winery in 2011 and uh, the, I, the, the 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 journey which i have i mean the story of rhythm winery which i'm going to tell you in, in these kind of points means i mean i mean every time for a entrepreneur who want to start a business or a, a project uh, before even starting i think one has to ask these three questions what why and how and i'm trying to give you or share my experiences about these three questions and try to give some sort of an experience and answers uh, that how i try to use these things to start the, the rhythm winery as a project. So at present, what? So, so rhythm winery, we are basically into the fruit wines. At present, the winery is in Pune. And we have got uh, something like a portfolio of different fruit wines, like uh, as Nilesh had already told us that we started with the pineapple, then we have a strawberry, peach, then Alfonso Kiwi, and we have recently introduced two new premium blends of mulberry and rosemary. Uh, the idea is that what means, I mean, when, how we started this rhythm winery. So the first thing what happens is that what? So any project when we want to start, the first thing is the idea or a concept. And how it built up is something like when I was in US, I was working with a winery. And uh, actually, I was working at the back end, but eventually, uh, I, I used to get interacted with the people like winemakers, their sales teams, and I started getting a liking of this kind of a, a, a segment. I mean, uh, every every week we used to have some of these wine testing, we used to have these wine talks, and I really started liking about not only the, 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 the system or a back end part of this project. But I really started liking about this product. And uh, so slowly, slowly, this idea of wines, getting into the wine, started building up in my mind. And uh, idea is not something like making wine, but you need to understand about the wine culture. It's not only the wine. I mean, once you get associated with wines, you get associated with different aspects of wines. And the different aspect of wine is the culture of the people the food associated with the wines and that is how i 
expected on every weekends when I was in, I mean, when I was in US, I mean, generally when we go to the restaurants, uh, the the way we order is the, the, the basic, the common food that we basically like it. But when I started getting into the journey of wines, uh, we started ordering different kinds of food. So we used to think, oh, wow, let's order this wine. So what sort of food we have? Today, we'll go to the Italian food. Uh, we'll try Italian food. We'll try some Oriental food. So which wines uh, uh, can go well with these foods? So these kind of a uh, thought process started in my mind. And that really gives you a, a good amount of an exposure about the product that you're actually going to venture in. So this, what I'm talking about is that the, 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 the how that what question, the answer got built up. So many times what happens is that as an entrepreneur, we all are entrepreneurs, I mean, we have all these great ideas, but sometimes what happens, we are a little bit impulsive and uh, we, 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 we get some idea and we start getting focused into that particular idea and what we can do and all those things. But what I want to tell, especially in uh, our segment and foods and beverages, it takes some time means even to give get the answer of what you want to do. This is what it all started happening. And slowly, slowly I got to this, this wine concept. And as I was talking about is wine is not only the wine product, but lots of other things means. I mean, it comes along with the culture, the people, the sort of food that they eat, the sort of festivals that they have. And then I got an opportunity to go to a place called Italy Barolo. And then I, I was there for a one week. And that was a place where I could really see the, 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 the sort of a people who are into this wine industry. So it's a very small town. And um, there were so many small wineries. I was talking about a place called Barolo in, in Italy. So I, I stayed there for four to five days. And that really gave me the kind of a passion which I was looking for. I mean, those people who are so passionate about what they're making, and sort of a love that they have. And that is what is really required when you get into any particular kind of a venture. I mean, you really need to be passionate. At the same time, you need to really love about what you're going to do. So that is once you start getting into that kind of a zone, you start understanding what means. And uh, that was what I really, that was my first interaction with the wine culture. Uh, when I came back to India, it was, I really have not really decided that I really want to start my own winery. But uh, then when I came back to India, I tried, I thought, okay, okay, I've seen some wineries outside. Why not to see the wineries in India? And then I did a tour of places like Nasi. Then I visited to uh, Sangli. Uh, there are a couple of wineries in Pune also. And basically that was an in initial stage of our, I mean, I'm, I'm talking about a period of around uh, 2010 or 2011, where uh, there are hardly a couple of major players were there, like Sula was there, then Indej was there, Grover was there. But because of some sort of a policy changes, there were some kind of a farmers that they started uh, getting into this kind of a, 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 a winery, uh, starting a winery along with their, uh, I can say, the grape cultivation. And so I visited the uh, different, uh, uh, different wineries. I talked to those people, their owners, those farmers, uh, some of the uh, uh, some uh, entrepreneurs. But the sense which I really got to know from them is that uh, everybody was uh, very much uh, excited to get into the winery. But the moment when they produce the product and when the product actually uh, uh, went to the, the market, the sort of a response was not great. Because the idea is that let's uh, we need to understand that, uh, see, making a particular uh, Manufacturing is one thing and getting that manufactured product to the consumer is the second thing. I mean, uh, let's, we need to understand the sort of a culture what we have in India. If you consider our drinking culture, majority of the people, uh, even I will say till now, are more 
accustomed to the taste of the what we call it as an IMF drink or a beer or whiskey and that kind of a palate we had. So all of a sudden, when you have this kind of, uh, what I can say, um, uh, uh, a different kind of a beverage which has been put across you, uh, it is very difficult for a consumer or a customer to really accept that kind of a, a, a drink. So the sort of a response or a feedback which I used, uh, which we got, from the uh, from the from the pr producer was that no still we are not getting that great kind of response to things so i just understood the whole uh, what you can say the the overall i got a good kind of a picture of a, of a wine industry and uh, when i came back we started talking about it Ki, is it really makes sense to start a winery at this point of time then the first thing while having a talk with my friends and all those things, the, the, the first, the, the point which came in uh, our discussion was uh, the acceptance to the product and why there is not great acceptance to the product because of the test. So why not to offer people, uh, 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 because uh, uh, wine is a very complex segment. I mean, even for uh, test understanding or appreciate a wine, it's a, a little bit of a complex uh, uh, scenario. Means, I mean, it's not something like you just open a bottle of wine and test it and you start liking it. Uh, because the sort of a test profile, the sort of a uh, aroma are a little complex. They are not very big that anybody can just open, a, open it and start loving it. So you need to spend some time. I mean, if you consider why this wine culture has really got into the people in European or um, Western countries because they have this tradition for thousands of years. And after thousands of years, they got to know about this. The whole, uh, the culture has been built around that wine. The, the festivals, the food, which can go well with the wine has been, uh, I mean, uh, created, which is not the case in India. I mean, all of a sudden, what we started thinking is that there is a huge amount of crop which is going west. Why not to have some sort of a policy and uh, get into the uh, 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 wines? I mean, because the pricing of the uh, fruit will be very, uh, I mean, quite cheap. And if we put it very well, I mean, uh, the farmers can get a great amount of money out of it. But that is not the case. The idea is that we were missing, everyone was missing that consumer segment and the acceptance of a consumer segment. I mean, you can make a, a, a product at a very low price, but what's the use if there is no acceptance? And the, that is where we started talk, thinking, okay, there is at, at present, at, it's a long way to go. It's not something like we can just change the test profile of an Indian consumer and they will start liking these grape wines. So the, the, then the, the thing which we got, I mean, the, the point which came across was the test profile, okay? So in case of, I don't want to get into a very technical things about the wines or testing, but in case of wine, there are two things. I mean, one is the mouthfeel when you drink, and the second one is the, 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 the test profile, what we call is an aroma and a flavor. So the point here is that, the flavor and the test profile, which was, which basically is from the grapevine, are very complex flavors. I mean, it is not something like very straightforward flavors or a, 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 what you can say, aromas that a common man who has not been into the regular wines can understand this. And that was the big which I thought, which is happening big, uh, for the acceptance of the consumer. So. Then what we thought is that why not to offer to the people uh, when those people, they know what they are drinking or, or because that is the main thing, right? I mean, whether people will like it or not is a second option. But unless and until people don't understand what they are consuming, uh, it has no meaning, right? Means, I mean, unless and until there is a connect with the product and the consumer, uh, that whether you are making a great quality product or not has no meaning.
I think uh, Akalpit ji is having some issues. So let's just wait for him to come back. A couple of questions in the chat box, which I guess uh, I can also answer on his behalf. One is from uh... Uh, hi, uh, hi, Nilesh. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, we can. Okay, move. so yeah, there was a uh, I just lost, so that's okay. Uh, okay, so what I was talking about is uh, that uh, the, the major disconnect was the test profile and that is where we started working on that why not to offer a product or wines where people know the, the, the test and that is where the whole concept or idea of a fruit wine came into the picture. Uh, then we did a lot of R&Ds and all those things which kind of fruits are better for making wines, what, what sort of a stability and all those things. And then we, 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 the, 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 the major thought process of rhythm winery is that the, as I told you already that uh, every wine has got two things. One is the structure and the, uh, uh, which we call it as a mouthfeel and the second one is the taste profile. So the structure according to us basically comes from the grape. Okay, because it has got the natural parameters like the sort of a, right balance of sugar and uh, what you can say, the acidity, it has all that tannins and all those things. So those things impart to your structure and a mouthfeel of a product. And the test profile will come from that fruit. So the whole concept of our fruit wines at Rhythm is something like a blend of a grape wine and which will give you the whole kind of a structure and the mouthfeel. And for getting the test profile, we are blending those with the fruits. So that is how people, and when we when we introduce our product initially, yes, I mean, there was a huge kind of a, uh, I mean, uh, the struggle because the uh, initially the segment of the fruit wine, uh, sorry, the wine itself is a small segment. Even over and above, what we want to do is that we wanted to, again, create a niche segment of a fruit wine into the wine. So people initially getting to the consumers was a challenge. But over the period of time, I mean, it's almost a journey of something like eight to 10 years now. The people have started because we were taking parts of different wine festivals, then we were part, part of different testings. So people started knowing about the brand and that is how they started testing it. And majority of the people started liking it. And the major thing of the liking of the product was they could associate that test. I mean, once the day when you know, because we all have grown up with the with the kind of a, uh, a different kinds of a varietals of mangoes and all those things. So when you test a particular mango wine and when you get that kind of a test profile, uh, that is where the whole connect of the consumer starts coming in. And that was where the whole concept of what came into the picture and we started this is how we build up our portfolio. I mean, what exactly we want to offer. And that is where after doing all these kind of, a, uh, what you can say, the uh, different types of study, R&D kind of a discussion with the people, uh, eventually we got the answer of this what, that what exactly we want to offer it to the consumer. Now, the second question is that, okay, you're come, you, 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 you know what you want to do or what you want to offer to the consumer. Second thing, at the same time, one have, we have to ask this question to ourselves, why? I mean, yes, I mean, we have got a great kind of an uh, uh, idea that we want to offer, but is whether should we give it 
why should I give it? And is there anyone who is already giving it? Is there anything which I'm giving any sort of a value addition or something like that? So that kind of these questions that comes up with the question of why. And as an startup or as an entrepreneur, we need to answer this, that if I'm going to offer this fruit wines as a rhythm, why should I offer? Means is that going to make anything difference in the existing kind of a business scenario market to the consumer test or something like that? And we need to really find out the answers for this or the points that why we should, why I should get this product into the market. So that is the second, uh, I mean, uh, uh, thing that we started with why. Uh, why rhythm fruit wines? So the first thing is that, yes, means, I mean, uh, uh, when we started something like in 2010 or something, uh, the, I mean, it was a completely a new idea. I mean, nobody has even uh, tried these kind of things at the commercial level. So there is no doubt about it that this concept has got a unique, uh, what you can say, an advantage in the market. Second thing, what we need to talk or what, what we need to check is that, is that going to make any value addition? I mean, that's fine. Means, I mean, I have a great business uh, idea and uh, uh, that kind of an thing is really not in the market. But by taking my product to the market, is it really going to make any value addition? I mean, these are the things that we need to really work out as an entrepreneur when we are thinking about our ideas. Uh, second and foremost thing is that we have to consider that does it really make a business sense? Uh, see, as an entrepreneur, there is no doubt about it that initially, I mean, it is not that everyone just start thinking till end, right? Means, I mean, when you have an idea and when that particular product is completely uh, a unique kind of a product that you want to launch, it is very difficult to really come up with the complete business project or business plan uh, based on that. But what I feel is that once you have that kind of an idea in your mind, uh, then when you're, that's the first step, right? I mean, that is the first uh, first uh, initial phase of any venture or a project. But then when you start thinking about why you want to launch that particular product, you need to start thinking from the business perspective to a certain extent. I'm not saying that even, I mean, when I started this uh, uh, kind of a project, I had no idea about foods and beverages. I mean, uh, I mean, I myself used to try different food. Uh, I mean, the beverages, the beer or something like that, but I never had that kind of a business sense. But the point is that when we as an entrepreneur, uh, we come up with some sort of a, a business idea, we have to take an account of its business feasibility, okay? And when I talk or say that business feasibility, that doesn't mean that you need to be a, a professional or a, a, a guy who is already into this, uh, I mean, their costing and CA and all those things. I mean, those are the people whom we have to take a help. There is no doubt about it. But as an entrepreneur, somehow, somewhere down the line, we need to have put it on the paper and we have to see some sort of a financial feasibility of that project. I mean, there may be some sort of a gaps. There might be some sort of a more, uh, what I can say, the insights which will be required to develop that particular plan. But before even going or thinking, we should have this kind of a, some sort of a financial uh, data needs to be put on the paper. I mean, that really helps you to understand what sort of things that may not even, uh, while, while just say, because the idea is more like a, 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 a what I can say, a, a passion or some sort of a, you get, you're more like a, an emotional kind of a phase where you get into the love of that particular idea or a project or kind of a product. Second thing, you start becoming, we need, as an entrepreneur, we need to become more realistic. I mean, we start thinking that feasibility aspect 
these kind of a questions or criteria so i will what i thought is that with my minimal uh, what you can say uh, the knowledge of finance or something but uh, i started writing uh, some sort of a, putting these financial ideas on my paper and that really helped us that really helped us i mean uh, after 10 years down the line i still have my first business plan and i could see that uh, i mean uh, what we are doing now and what i what we had thought at that point of time i mean there is a huge means huge gap but i still feel that it really gave us a starting point which is very important third thing what we need to uh, see i mean i don't want to say much about this because these are the the basic criteria that we thought about when we started uh, getting into these two points so the, the third thing which i really feel is that okay now we have got i mean i uh, as i told you that uh, when i was in usa i got exposed to this kind of a wine culture i started uh, uh, really liking this kind of a product i started testing it i started getting more uh, what can say having an interaction with the people who are making the wines so that really built up my 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 passion or my love to about to making wine second thing when i came back to india i started thinking the feasibility of this project by so first thing what i did was as i told you that i really visited the different wineries i got a feel of the product see and that is very important and then we thought and we came to a a conclusion that yes i think we need to start on this project it doesn't make just sense to just bruise on the idea and has no meaning right so that is where we thought ki yes get into the uh, uh, into the merchants i mean we know that uh, it is not just uh, i mean uh, straight forward we are going to get into the troubled waters but one has to get into that unless i mean you can't just think and think and think so then in something like 2011 um i got uh, one of my friend who was also in, who was in qatar and who was also very much interested in uh, getting into the foods and beverages and that is how we really started this project going and initially i just we had two tanks uh, we just started with something like 2000 liter of course batch i mean i can there there thousands of stories we had uh, with Uh, our wine maker with our people because we every nobody was very clear about uh, the end end product uh, i mean this is the the product is not something like you can get to see in something like in one week or so it it is like uh, uh, going for a baby it takes almost 8 to 10 months where you can actually see the sort of a product that what you have done uh, you will get to test and all those things only after 8 to 10 months so it's a long process third thing is that now how it is we have we 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 i i told you that what and why now the question is how i mean now it is not something like this is not a project which i could have started in a in my backyard or something like that because uh, i don't know fortunately or unfortunately this uh, does come under excise so in our in, uh, in our country i mean there are lots of uh, lots of restrictions uh, about getting into the uh, alcohol project so even if we had a little bit uh, kind of a uh, there are a lot of subsidies on the on the uh, duty side and all those things but still the process of manufacturing and getting license is not very straight forward so that is where we really spend lot of time understanding the compliances the issues and all those things that is how oh, i mean slowly slowly i mean we got to know okay, okay these are the things these are the uh, what you can say the compliances one has to do uh, and we i mean see it is not our case i mean when we used to go to the excise office even the excise people were not aware about these things because see this is something like a totally different area even for the excise right means i mean they are accustomed to this uh, the uh, hard liquor kind of a distillation project or a beer project but nobody had really got into this kind of wine business so 
even there were so much gray areas which we used to discuss about the exercise people we need to understand we used to read along with the books taking with the exercise officers saying that okay see this is the line uh, through which now we can go ahead and all those things but uh, i can tell you is that when uh, when 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 you are really uh, going uh, serious about certain things people do help you means it is not something we always have this kind of a uh, what i can say a, a a a view about this uh, bureaucracy or the politicians that no the nothing happens uh, unless until um, i mean you i mean it is not i don't want to get into that kind of thing but what in short what i mean to say is that if you are really serious and if you know what you want to do uh, people do help and initially we really got help from all these people and that is how we started uh, the thing which i can want to tell you about is that any project you think of or any startup or any idea what you have in mind the one thing i can share from my 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 uh, experience is that you need to be thoroughly technically sound on the project i mean to say it doesn't mean that you are the one who will be doing everything but unless and until you as an entrepreneur have no idea about the technicalities of the product or maybe to a certain extent the finance of the product you, you should know about the the marketing side of the product i, I you can't just uh, rely on the people i mean there is there is a two uh, difference there is i mean uh, one one person cannot do everything that is sure means i mean there has to be a delegation and all those things but the person who is who is going to be a part of this uh, overall project one should know everything i mean he may not be the expert i mean i am not not an expert as a wine maker or i am not a expert in finance or i am not expert in marketing but i am as a as a as a as a as a as a director or as a wine maker or as a entrepreneur i should have a complete hold on these kind of areas and that doesn't mean that you need to be an expert on that but you should know i mean nobody can should be able when someone talks to you he should know that this guy or this person or this lady has the idea and knowledge so nobody can make fool of you so one thing which i really uh, uh, and uh, i mean give a stress for any startup for any entrepreneur is that you do anything but you need to have a complete knowledge about it okay and when i say complete knowledge doesn't take it literally but you should know the 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 top view aspect of that product and that is the thing which i i mean uh, when i started this i mean for last, before that i was get i was into this project for last 4 to 5 years i was doing uh, making wines i was reading books i was testing different wines that gave us the complete feel of it i mean and that really helped me and that is really helping me till today also second thing as which i was really talked about is that you have no escape but to have a uh, before any project one has to write a business plan and that business plan gives a huge huge uh, what you can say the vision uh, for your next kind of a decisions and uh, the first thing what you see this winery is a capital intensive project it is not something as i told that you can have a small room or you can start this in a backyard i mean uh, though i i as i told you i started with a very small just two tanks still it's not a very straight forward small kind of a project means i mean so unless and until you don't know what is going to be your break even when are you going to reach to that break even it doesn't make any sense to start especially a project like winery because in the winery uh, we need to understand that the break even is even on a very smaller scale uh, the break even is not below before something like 5 to 7 years i mean this is what my 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 experience i mean uh, i don't want to really uh, being an uh, authority on this but 
not less than five to six years. And trust me, I mean, we being a small winery, because we have lots of uh, you know, less overheads, uh, we could achieve that break even in something like uh, two years or three years back. Means. But the idea is that the day I started this winery, I, I, I had, uh, which I told you that we have just a production of something like around 4,000, 5,000 bottles. Trust me, in that time we had we had a kind of a calculated or we had divided or we had planned uh, in our business plan that something like when we reach to 40000 or 50000 bottles a year we will be able to mitigate our expenses and we'll reach to the break even and i'm happy to tell you that yes i mean we are on that uh, i mean there is a deviation there is a, some sort of a gap but that really helped us i mean that okay, we always had some sort of a, a target in our mind that okay, we, it is not just that we want to have this new wine in the market, let's have a great packaging and all those things. We as a team, we always had some sort of an eye that okay, what is my break even? I mean, unless and until you don't keep that kind of a what you can say, in, uh, uh, kind of a plan in, in front of you. It's very, very difficult, especially in the project like a winery, because as I told you that the, the working cycle of winery itself is something like from getting the fruit to the getting the wine into the bottle itself takes something like around uh, 10 to 15 months. And uh, uh, so that is one of the biggest, what you can say, the, the working cycle and uh, of any any project, which I know means I mean. So you need to have this working capital um, you know, planned with you. Many times what we do is that we only think of production cycle or production investment. But uh, as a, uh, what from my, uh, what I can say in last eight to 10 years, what we got to know is that your production investment is hardly something like uh, 15 or 20%. The, we need to have a great amount of a capital investment, working capital investment, almost two to three times of that then only that only will give you a, a good kind of a stability because as i told you that the since the working capital of the fruit wines or any wine means i mean uh, actually for the the normal traditional wine the working cycle is more than 10 to 15 months but in our case is is still between 10 to 15 or uh, 12 months so we need to consider that what as an uh, business person I'm going to consider those expenses which are going to come in that 10 to 15 months because till that it is only your expenditure cycle which is running only after 10 to 15 months the, the product will get into the market and you will start getting money right and that is again for a new product those are the tussles and the hurdles that we have to face so the that's the one thing which I always, whenever I talk to the people, many people come and they have these ideas of starting uh, uh, these wineries and all those things. So I, I always tell them that it's great. And trust me, I mean, for next 10 to 15 years, the way the, as uh, I mean, I even, it was very exciting when Nilesh was talking about the MSMEs and all those things, those figures. So considering our overall, uh, what you can say, the Indian market and maybe the uh, the overseas market, there is no doubt in my mind that uh, uh, there is a great, there is not a great scope for these beverage industry or foods industry. I mean, because uh, see, there is a new generation which is coming, and we need to understand one thing is that as I was talking when we took our product in the market. Uh, people were a little hesitant of testing wines, but now why? Because the, the 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 consumer at that time was only exposed to the uh, IMFL drinks like whiskey, beer, rum, gin, and all those things. And once you develop your palate, it is very difficult for a consumer to shift to a totally different product like a fruit-based product, right? But the good thing or the positive thing about the market now is that the people who are now entering into this drinking age, especially of the people, uh, the, 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 the young generation of 
age of 20 to 25, they have, they don't have a specific or some sort of a prejudice for why they don't have it because now they are open, they're trying for all the products. They will try beer, they will try wines, they will try some other different kind of uh, beverages. And then that acceptance will come because they are not prejudiced with particular drink, okay? They are more open. So for, for the for, for next 10 to 15 years, I feel that there is an enormous opportunity in, 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 in the, for the foods, and uh, especially the beverages uh, segment. I mean, it's, I'm not just focused on uh, putting uh, the wine industry, but overall the beverages part, there is a huge amount of uh, a market which, which is getting generated in India itself. So it's a very positive thing. But my point is that word of caution is that you need to understand where you're jumping. I mean, uh, unless and until you have got a huge amount of, uh, 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 what you can say, the, the, uh, the capital investment, which is getting it, uh, you have as a support. It doesn't matter. I mean, as a businessman, you need to really understand, right, how you are going to invest your money and what sort of a return on that investment. So as an entrepreneur, this is more like an, a, a, what you can say, not cautious, but one needs to be very planned uh, while uh, coming up with these kind of, uh, uh, what you can say, the implementations of these uh, projects. Uh, see, we can talk and talk and talk about wines. I mean, the... The, I mean, I can share my experience and all those things, but uh, I mean, uh, we can't, what I was thinking is that when we talk about the wine industry, uh, we always uh, talk about something like setting up a winery, right? But uh, it is not like for any uh, a person who wants to get into the industry, uh, one has to see the overall, uh, what you can say, the supply chain of that industry. And there are so many areas where uh, a new entrant can be a part of that particular, uh, the whole supply chain industry. So as uh, my advice or my suggestion to the people who, are, who want to get into the wineries, uh, they should not be very myopic of just having their setting up their own winery or uh, coming up with their brand or getting into the manufacturing. No wrong with that means I mean that's one of the most challenging area or something one should go for it. But along with that, as in uh, from the business perspective, uh, I just want to uh, uh, what I can say share some of the areas along who want to get into this mining industry and we should really look into those areas also. So the first prospective areas, what I can think of in the wine industry is something like setting up your winery and getting into the wine manufacturing, which I think for last uh, 30 minutes, we were talking on that only, uh, which is always uh, a, a great thing to be in. But at the same time, it has got its pros and cons. So we need to really uh, study that and get into that. Second thing, as I'm being, I mean, myself as what I can suggest is that one can, you can become a winemaker, you can become a wine chemist or something like that. And now there are so many courses which are coming up. Uh, 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 there are so many different, um, uh, lots of training centers which are happening where you can get to know about this wine knowledge of wine manufacturing and you can become a winemaker and uh, maybe these are the stepping stones to get into your uh, maybe winery or something but trust me i mean uh, the way the, the 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 industry is grooming or uh, taking shape uh, there is a huge demand going to for, uh, will, will, there will be a great demand for these winemaker and these uh, people or wine assistants uh, who are the experts in winemaking so I think we should really look of this aspect also. Uh, third thing is that hospitality industry. See, that is something like, uh, uh, what you can say, the, the marketing part of the wine industry. I mean, I mean, see, we can make great wines, we can have great winemakers, we can have a great fruits, we can have a great packaging. But why if we are not able to put it across the consumer? See, as a winemaker or as a wine producer, I cannot get 
take a bottle and get into the market and offer it that uh, uh, that wine to the consumer there is a different kind of an a chain which is something like in the hospitality industry which is actually going to interact with the consumers and trust me i mean there is a difference between a retail shop and a hospitality or a, a restaurant in the retail shop the shop owner will only sell that bottle but in case of a restaurant uh, the the main guy or the fnb guy or someone who has an opportunity to interact with the consumers and that is where the whole thing is i mean unless and until uh, that guy is not knowledgeable a person who is serving a wine to you i mean how can he talk about uh, i mean how can you get to know about that particular product or a wine so i feel that there is a enormous uh, what can say an opportunity in this kind of a segment where there is a great chance of people interaction uh, who they can create an awareness about the wines about the product and that is a very i mean i mean at present i mean we don't have the people with the required amount or quantity as well as the required the what you can say the skill set i mean you people also must be aware i mean when you go to the restaurant and if you order a wine the person who is serving you uh, has no idea or i mean very few people have the idea about the wines i mean they will just uh, talk about okay you take red wine we have got white wine we have got sula and all of other things but they will not talk about the wine they will not able to suggest you about the wines so if someone i mean has got a great knowledge will be a great asset in the future for this uh, hospitality industry also uh, third thing fourth thing is that uh, yes the raw material suppliers i mean see uh, the if you see the complete picture of the wine winery i mean i need to grow the fruit i need to i mean i, I need to really uh, do the crushing i need to make the wine i need to package it and then i have to market it okay and then only i am going to have the uh, uh, something return on my sort of a uh, uh, capital investment or something like that so it is not many times in future also it is not going to be a one person's job for the whole cycle there will be players who will be doing everything but there will be quite an amount of new entrants who may or may not want to do all these things at one i mean by the one person only right so there will be different agencies i mean there will be some sort of a very uh, what you can say the technical or the expertise farmers or the people who will only grow the fruits as per the requirement they will offer the best quality of fruit at a best price uh, to the uh, to the winery winery will produce it then there will be a different uh, segment of a hospitality the marketing teams or the, these things they will actually put it across the product to the consumers so we need to understand the whole supply chain and that is where i really feel that you, we have got a good opportunities in this segment where one can focus on the fruit category one can focus on ingredients i mean the sort of an uh, what i can say the ingredients like uh, um, what i can say the yeast or some other nutrients or those things which are very specific to the wines so i mean we need to have that kind of a area also to be looked out who can be a supplier of this kind of a chain also i mean uh, at present we only have to depend on some sort of a uh, overseas companies but why not to have it at in india right i mean there is not something like a, a great uh, i mean there is nothing something very difficult thing to produce of our own means so that is also a very good area where kind good kind of a people can focus on these kind of a, uh, uh, the requirements which is basically come as a raw material for the wines uh fifth is plant and machinery there is a huge 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 requirement for the the plant and machinery as the wineries grows i mean who are going to make the plant, uh, the tanks i mean uh, uh, 2010 when i started uh, looking for uh, wine tanks fermentation tanks there are hardly couple of uh, uh, fabricators in in india 
so we used to order it from outside of india i mean i feel bad that i can't have a stainless steel tank for uh, for making my wine in india but over the period of time since now there is a uh, since the demand is also growing up there is a quite a good amount of a scope of uh, of people getting into this fabrication industry which is specifically for the beverage industry and uh, beverage and wine industry and the good part is that the sort of a 70 40 50% sort of a machinery which is required for wine industry can also be utilized for different kind of a uh, uh, what you can say the food or beverage industry so like the refrigeration unit if you if someone is making is not only for the wine but they can use it for the dairy part or they can use it for different uh, beverage part maybe in the food industry so one has to also think of these kind of areas where there is going to be a very good scope in the future uh, wine tourism is now as number of wineries grow uh, see uh, my 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 as a wine maker or as a as a as a as a wine uh, winery uh, i feel very bad that uh, i mean I, how my my wine story cannot really reach to the people right i mean how can i expect my wine to be told the way i speak with my consumer how can i expect a person in the other area will talk about this but if i develop my wine winery site itself as a selling point i mean there is a huge difference right i myself or a winery rhythm winery or any other winery can directly interact with the consumers that is where this wine tourism is going to play a huge role in the future since people will start liking to visit the wineries they will need to like to see the processes they will talk about the wines and that is how the whole actually the wine culture will develop only based on that and the best example which i can think of giving is sula the way they are managing their uh, i mean uh, wine tourism is fantastic it means i mean that is where they really came as a brand and uh, really took over the market means uh as uh, as uh, what we talking about wine training is one of the the most i mean i can say one of the great uh, there is a aspect to this kind of an industry and this kind of a skill set also uh yeah nilesh and his team and they are doing really good work in this kind of a segment because unless until you don't produce uh, people who can really work into this how can you grow as an industry right means i mean that is where uh, i mean there is a good scope um, uh, in this industry also as i talk, i'm talking about wine tester wine tester is a very technical area and very specific expertise which are required i mean uh, it is like a tea tester or something like that one has to groom all those uh, expertise over the period of time and you can be a wine tester and then you can you will be evaluate you will be in a position to evaluate or appreciate the wines and you can tell to the consumers uh, you can set the ratings of the wines and all those things see at present we are all dependent on the wine ratings of what is developed in european countries why why can't we have our own standards our own specifications why can't we devise our own rating tables uh, and uh, uh, make that awareness to the consumer so these are the things that will evolve only when we have this kind of a right expertise of the people uh, in that kind of a segment uh, the ninth is fssi and excise compliance see now the, uh, i mean uh, since uh, initially the wine industry was a very small industry over the period of time we have reached to a level where people have started recognizing us and when people started recognizing us the first thing who come into picture is all our compliance teams and compliance agencies that they also start thinking oh something is happening there so we need to look into it so there are lots of standards which are coming up there are lots of regulations will start coming up and we need to have the people who are really trained on these kind of an aspects who can understand see because as a as a maybe a, a technical person may not really understand Uh, the regulations and compliance part so we need to have a team of people who should be trained on those aspects also in case of a wine industry so that also a channel which uh, can be very much helpful in future means for the people to get into 
the last and not least is the food and wine blogger uh, people can talk about wine see unless and until there is a suggestion or there is a talk or something like that your consumer is not going to drink it so the people the poor bloggers especially uh, who should get into these wines they should start talking about the wine they should write about the wines that is how the whole thing will start revolving right so unless and until somebody talks about it people are not going to really test it so i feel that the whole area of this pr kind of thing or i can say uh, it's not a pr but that food blogging and this will be a huge play a huge role uh, in case of foods and beverage industry i mean uh, unless until somebody tells me that okay this is something good restaurant uh, i don't go to that restaurant right i mean this is a normal tendency so this area has got a huge potential uh, where they can really uh, create kind of a good awareness uh, 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 about the wine industry so i think social media i mean why should i talk about social media i mean everybody knows about it so the, there is a good amount of a scope uh, in that kind of a segment uh anyway i mean uh, this is what i just wanted to talk wanted to share about uh, my 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 experience or something like that i hope some points might have been useful to your project your venture uh, anything if you have some sort of queries questions we can talk or maybe you can share i can also get back to you people it's nothing specific yeah yeah nilesh i'm 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 done on my side so uh yeah you can take over okay thank you very much uh, yeah. akalpit ji uh, there are few questions in the chat box which i would like to read out okay uh going from the earliest ones uh, one of them is asking how did you get the land at what cost and fertility test okay so in our case the rhythm winery uh, the land means uh, if you uh, were talking about the fruit growing uh i was we were not involved in the fruit growing okay so idea is see for a wine industry and why a wine industry got a subsidy is because um, uh because the farmers are having that kind of a crop but they are not able to use that crop i mean since uh, so wine industry is being basically looked as a processing industry so in our case in the rhythm winery we didn't have that kind of a bandwidth of cultivating fruits and then making wine out of it so what we did was that we always relied on the people farmers that we used to purchase the fruit and then we used to make wine so in our case um we never invested in the land for growing fruit what if you are talking about the land for the winery that's a separate thing but as a suggestion what i will say is that if an entrepreneur and if you don't have your existing farm or something or orchard so um, what you can say the vineyards i think the first thing is that you should be able to focus more on the the manufacturing and the the marketing side of the product if you have your own farms or vineyards then that's a separate uh, thing altogether but i will suggest is that initially one should not really get into the uh, going for the growing fruit unless until they have got a huge kind of a capital uh, investment availability uh, then yeah i mean there is no doubt about it okay thank you uh, the next question is how do you add aroma to wine and is making uh, flavor like aroma or flavor okay. to wine and right. makes, so yeah, yeah so the idea is that see the first thing is that let's understand that wine and drinking a, a what you can say the strawberry pulp or a mango pulp drink are two different things when you crush the fruit and when you do the what you can say uh, what you can say the fermentation there are thousands and thousands of aromas that get developed okay so it is very difficult to really expect that this the sort of a same aroma and all those things will eventually come into your wine when you are testing so that is the first thing that we have to bear in the mind that if i am going to make that kind of a 
uh, what you can say for example our alfonso wine okay so what we are doing is that we are blending it with the grape and then we are for the taste profile we are having a blend of the uh, what you can say the mango wine with the uh, uh, what you can say the uh, grape wine one let's understand that we cannot have that kind of there are two things in the in the taste profile one is the flavor and one, second one is the aroma the flavor or the texture that does come through the fruit the overall aroma that you expect may not be the same what you expect from the from 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 your normal kind of a, a fruit juice or something like that so never ever expect that you will have the same kind of an aroma uh, in your bottle or something like that that is how you need to develop your product okay okay uh the next one is uh, how does the change in ratio of grapes to fruits used in the wine uh, how will it affects its taste and structure what is the most suitable ratio see uh, i being a wine maker and i being at the rhythm winery i don't know i mean uh, i am restricted to talk about the whole aspect of the recipes because the first thing as a wine maker is that there is no recipe or there is no proportion okay one has to develop or devise his or her own kind of a proportions and uh, that only comes with the with 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 kind of a blending and experience See, because just to tell you for example the strawberry has got more acidity uh, the mango has got more sweetness or sugar so it all depends on the end product what sort of a acidity and the sweetness balance that you want to measure so i will not say 70 30 40 80 90 10 or something like that this is how one has to really develop i mean over the period of time okay uh what are the challenges faced if we need to make 100% fruit wines or non grape wines see again at rhythm winery our school of thought is to blend okay and uh, as i was talking about is that according to us means i mean our school of thought is the the mouth feel or the structure comes from the grape and the taste profile is imparted from the fruit uh, see there is no challenge i such i mean uh, you can make just only you don't need to use the grape or something like that my only worry is the stability of the wine uh, over the period of time i think that we need to really uh, uh, check and that stability only comes when you do the r&d or check this product for something like for the cycle of 15 months two years at different temperatures that we have to see if we find it okay after 15 months or even after one year i think yes i mean there is no something difficult thing to just go into the fruit wine industry okay uh, from which capacity you started and what is your current capacity <laughs> uh see the i think we always have a model of not getting into the big thing i mean even if you ask me for uh, for next 10 years where you want to be i want to be a small we want to be a small niche winery with a boutique uh, kind of a structure so i started with something like 2000 liters at present we have reached to something like 55000 liters but if you consider from the other winery perspective we are uh, we are still into a small segment and how did you manage the finance at the initial level see initial level uh, as um, i started with uh, uh, my friend so uh, initial investment which was there from the actually capital investment was done from uh, from the outside the overall operational part i took care so the good thing with that happened was that we had a very minimal overheads i mean uh, we just started with something like four to five people with a minimal uh, kind of an uh, capital investment and plant and machinery idea was to understand the product how it works and what sort of a response the once you start getting your uh, working capital cycle running then you start getting the investments and you start getting some sort of a support from the banks but we took the loan or something like that banks only after something like 4 to 5 years when our product was actually running in the market 
so this is how i think one needs to really think that you are not going to get money in next 15 to 20 months from your investment so you need to have that kind of a provision uh, maybe for, i mean that is what one has to look into it means i mean there are so many venture capitalists and all those things which are coming into the picture so one has to take a call on that means in my case yes i mean i had a initial support but um, yeah means i mean some of we could manage in next 3 to 4 years and our cycle started running but the key thing is that keep your expenses minimal that's the i can suggest is the main key see once you start once your product starts running i mean yeah i mean i mean then that is your appetite of your business and your vision but initially i will always suggest is that you have to keep the things under your control okay okay uh, i guess there are few questions but we are uh, run out of time so uh, i would request them to uh, directly contact you absolutely and, yes uh, probably you can guide them even further so it, it was a fascinating session okay. i myself thank you very much because uh, you know for obvious reasons so uh, we'll uh, maybe once the lockdown is over i'll come over to your house like last time oh yeah yeah, yeah. and the... can have, yeah i mean even these people they can come to our winery we can talk we can test the wines that's always a pleasure definitely we have to uh, i mean it's a culture so it may take some more years but Correct. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much. So, Diksha, oh, can yeah. you propose a, a formal vote of thanks? Yes. Uh, I would like to propose vote of thanks. Sincerely, thanks to Mr. Palpit Prabhuner sir for a very interesting and enlightening session. I would like to thank our support partners, ASST Mumbai Chapter, Entra Auto, Metro Fund, and AIFP. And thank you all the participants for attending today's webinar. I declare the session as ended. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much.